Alaska's summer is a season filled with life. It is a world filled with tough living things that use all their strength to reproduce and survive. Now I go to meet the bravest people in the world, the people of Alaska. They are survival experts, living between the freezing Arctic Ocean and the extensive tundra. They're the real keepers of Alaska, who have dwelled in this frozen land for 20,000 years. Let's go deeper into their stories. In order to reach Baro, located in the northernmost part of Alaska, I must make a short stop at Prudhoe Bay. What catches the eyes of a foreigner in this foreign place is the huge and endless pipeline. In 1968, the world's largest oil field was discovered in the Alaskan Arctic Ocean. After that, in 1977, this oil pipeline was built. 눈으로 봐도 이렇게 굽이쳐 흐르는 것이 보이는데요. 그 이유는 알래스카가 기본적으로 겨울에는 영하 한 30도, 40도까지 떨어지고요. 여름에는 뭐 더울 땐 30까지 30도까지 올라가는 그런 기온 차이로 인한 변화를 잘 극복할 수 있게끔 그렇게 그 시스템을 만들어 놓은 것이 참 독특한 것 같습니다. The pipeline that extends across the earth has become a direct symbol of the environmental problems we face today. Energy the lifeline for civilization and nature, the base of the natives' lives, they are both something we can give up. But it is also difficult to find a middle ground. I am on my way to my destination, Baro, from Prudhoe Bay. The pipeline extends in both directions on the tundra like a capillary. The Arctic Ocean holds one-fifth of the world's natural resources. Much like the gold rush from 100 years ago, Alaska has become a rich mine of this era. For me, this trip is exciting because I can see the ends of the world not because it is the Arctic Ocean filled with natural resources. After a long plane ride, I arrive in Baro. Today, I arrived in Baro. The top of the world, the most important part of the world, the most important part of as soon as we arrive at the airport, we head for the Arctic Ocean. After seeing the closed road sign, I start to realize I'm at the northernmost village. The ocean with ice floating on its surface is exactly what I've seen in documentaries. Perhaps it's the overwhelming feeling of standing before the Arctic Ocean, or maybe it's the fog. But I feel as if I'm inside a dream. Okay, 
겨울에는 여기가 다 얼어 있을 텐데 아, 지금 5, 6, 7월 여름에 잠깐 녹아 있는 동안 이렇게 빙하수를 여름이지만 약간 단맛도 있고요 짭짤한 맛이 일반 바다에서 볼 수, 느낄 수 없는 그런 한 맛이 Although it's the middle of summer, the Arctic is bleak. But what's this? It's a whale. I'm not sure when it was caught. Is it for the polar bears? It's definitely not hunting season for whales. But where did it come from? I found out later that it was the baleen, which is something I only heard about. It strains the food that enters the mouth like teeth. The jawbone of a dead whale is released back to the ocean. Is this the spirit of the whale that hasn't returned to the ocean? Summer is hunting season for seals. I catch a ride on a boat owned by a member of the Inupiat, an Alaskan native tribe. Hunting sea mammals, like whales and seals, are permitted only to natives. The captain focuses fully on the ocean. And the gunner seems very swift with his movements. The teamwork of these two affects the results. We put seal hunting aside for a moment for we could not just pass by the enormous floating ice that appeared in the water. It's hard to believe I'm standing here. In the back of my mind, I wonder if the ice will break. The average temperature in the Arctic in August is 5 degrees. It's about the same as March in Korea. It's easy to see that the floating ice is melting. The depth is so deep. Its color is totally different from the blue oceans I've seen elsewhere. The deepest place in the Arctic Ocean is said to be over 5,000 meters. Kukaji and Yi Chun Kyojong of Hamian, Jabute Pangangi Chukbangang there, Yi Chun Kyojong of Hamian, North Pole, Kukuk Jamis. Many explorers have passed through this ocean to reach the North Pole. However, for the Inupiat, this ocean is not for exploration or even for conquering. It's their way of survival. Seals come up to the surface of the water in order to breathe air. So they aim at that moment. The captain rushes the boat to where the seal was spotted. Did we lose it? There is no trace where the gun was shot. It couldn't have gone far.
just then. The seal appears right in front. Is it a hit this time? Hunting must not be so easy even for those who were born hunters. The hide and seek with the seal continues. This time, the seal appears quite obviously. It seems they're unlucky today. Both the captain and the gunner seem torn with anxiety. This is what we live on. Live on for this is like our garden. Mm -hmm. Like feeds us during the winter months. Mm -hmm. If we don't have it, then we go hungry. Mm -hmm. So kind of very important for us as that we can our steel, very steel and nails. In the Inupiat village, the road is the children's playground. For children, bicycles are best for playing. Why? The children don't look very different from us. They're also descendants of Mongolia, who came through the Bering Sea 20,000 years ago. Ah, uh, mosquito. Where's this? Where's this? My guy got it. Your guy got it? Yeah. <laughs> they wear this over their heads to avoid mosquitoes. The place swarms with mosquitoes in the summer. It's a must-have item for children. At the entrance of the village, a family is busy cutting up a seal. Oh, that's the blubber. Huh? Have that's a bite. Oh, get up, get up, get Oh, blubber. It's a. Yeah. It was people. about six hundred pounds. Oh, six hundred pounds. Oh. When the Inupiat catch a seal, they make every little part useful, not disposing anything. Wow! Is this? Ah, seal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Try the seal. Ah. Mm -hmm. Try it. And, uh, this is my first time tasting seal meat jerky. Good, huh? Vitamin. Vitamin. All natural from the stream. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 어제 잡은 물고기들 이렇게 커팅해 가지고요. 이렇게 쭉 넣어 놨습니다. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's all right. mm -hmm. The dried meat becomes emergency food for the winter months. Here the Inupiat people must work busily during the short summer months in order to get through the long winter. Wow. It's great. Wow. It's still it's still uh, yeah, when do you um it was all year high back in year. Yeah, you scrape it. Trying to get as much off as you can. Yeah, yeah. So, scrape, 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 scrape mm -hmm. until it's done. The Inupiat hunt solely for survival. It's not a sport for them. Wow, you home? My home. Wow. Whaling harpoon. Whaling. Whaling. Uh, whaling. Bullhead. Yeah, right. Yes. Whaling. Yeah. So gun? Is it gun? It's, it's a gun, yeah. It's, gun. it's just like a pipe bomb, pretty ah, much, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. A, a projectile like that. Okay. It's, it's all right. You, you have a harpoon here. 
Harpoon. And then your trigger mechanism right here. Mm -hmm. And then your projectile. Mm -hmm. And then you just. Yeah, I don't have them. Right here, let me show you. It's hard to imagine they face against the enormous whales with this harpoon. Right here. This is bowhead eardrum. Ah. The ear. I'm seeing many things for the first time. A whale's eardrum and a sea elephant's ivory. Seeing these things makes me realize the Inupiat are the hunters of the Arctic Ocean. Elders and just feed people, you know. It, yeah, it's a non-profit yeah, yeah. thing, mm -hmm. and then all night. Mm -hmm. It was uh, that's with butcher. Wow, butchering. Yeah, yeah. So, forty families. Forty families. About yeah, this right here. Oh. And then we'll travel 60, 70 miles to another village. Another village. Who yeah. don't whale? And we just go feed another village. Share yeah, together, sure together so wow. we stay close and try to keep the tradition going. Good custom. Good yes. Custom. Yeah. So, nice. but yeah, it's, yeah, it has a lot. It is illegal to buy or sell things that were hunted for money. Oh, this stuff is no good. It could only be used for the sole purpose of survival. The men hunt all their lives, and the women butcher. They've become master butchers. Hi. I had a different babysitter. The After you slice it, mm -hmm. it goes in, it makes the oil. Oh, yeah. You put it in a bucket and it makes mm -hmm. its uh, oil. oil. Mm -hmm. right now. Every part is used wisely. No, then we'll use some of this. You want whisker? Here, oh. whisker. Ah. Toothpick. They used to use those for toothpick a long time ago. Ah, uh, toothpick. Yeah. Yeah. They are perfect to use as toothpicks. Out of all things, seal leather is something the Inupiat cannot live without. And then we, all the hair is going to come off and then we, uh, when we put the fat in, that waterproofs the skin. Subsistence. Subsistence. way of life. Yeah. How we got it. Yeah. This cute little one in the family must have been scared of me. I love you, Christine. Usually it's easier for children to open up their hearts than adults. Her shyness disappears. And the little lady has fun jumping on the trampoline. Interestingly, the origins of the trampoline come from a traditional game played by the Inupiat. Every year, there's a whale festival in the Inupiat village. One of the representative games is jumping on a blanket made with seal leather. The Arctic region is culturally unfamiliar to me, and geographically, it's a place I want to explore. Of course, I cannot go to the North Pole from here. Nevertheless, I still wanted to see the end of the road. End of the road. the end of the road. Road finish. Where is the end of the road? Ah, uh, ah, uh, no, no, not that way. Is there a road o over there? Yeah. The road? We can go straight? Yeah, there's a polar bear over there. Polar bear? Yeah. Over there? Yeah. Did you see? Yeah. Yeah. Did you see? In the water. Ah, in the water. They're, they're hungry. Ah, they're hungry. We don't go over there. Yeah. Really? Polar bear. Polar bear. He says I can see polar bears. Maybe I'm tackling this land too fearlessly. In the end, I give up going north. However, 
I encounter all these people coming from the north. Could they have seen polar bears? There's a beautiful, um, wonderful scientist doing radar um, ah, further up. They have radar a, over there. Yeah, they have a, a hut set up. I decide to follow these people researching the Arctic Ocean and to visit their radar base. It is said there is a significant amount of natural gas in the permafrost of the tundra. So Baro is a research base for scientists to research the tundra and the Arctic Ocean. Caribou. Caribou. Lots of mosquitoes. Yeah. On our way back, we meet some caribou hunters. There's a couple of caribou right out here. Uh, there's a caribou here? Yeah. Uh -huh. Some out here. <laughs> During the summer, in the wetlands of the tundra, mosquitoes the size of grasshoppers swarm covering the sky. It becomes worse when there's a carcass. Quickly, we move in search for caribou. Unbelievably, across the horizon, thousands of caribous are moving in a pack. We asked a caribou hunter if we could follow along, but he flatly refuses. Still, I can't lose this opportunity. But soon I realized the reason why he told me not to follow him. The ground is not suitable for driving, and it is impossible to predict in which direction a bullet would come flying. Might be cold. Wow. How much bullets? Uh, that one, I never see that. I try to get him. Whenever they come, they're not, not here all the time. Like this week, really, really good week for caribou. They, last week, nothing around. The caribous move depending on the seasons. We're lucky to be able to see them like this. The hunter approaches the caribous facing against the wind, so his scent will not blow towards them. Then he starts chasing them. Caribou hunting is successful. When they're not hunting whales, caribou makes a good meal. Marvin cuts out the organs right away in order to reduce the weight of his load. The internal organs are precious meat for the Inupiat. Heart, heart. Kidneys. This one, the membrane around the stomach. Stomach. Yeah, out of fat. Real good. My heart felt heavy when I followed along the whale hunt. But this time I feel happy there's plenty for the family to eat. But Marvin's four-wheeler that was racing along runs out of gas. According to the law of the tundra, you should help those in need of help. So I decide to help Marvin. I feel quite proud of myself for being able to help someone after receiving so much hospitality from the people in Alaska. As we arrive in front of Marvin's house, his son, who very much resembles his father, comes to greet us. That's my son, his name is Barrow. Barrow? Barrow, like that city? That's it. I was done he named his son after his hometown, Baro. I can feel the pride of the Inupiat. 
I make some caribou soup and you guys go uh, try Tomorrow. It. Uh, what time? Uh, caribou soup. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. I'll make some and I'll let you guys try it. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm on my way back after receiving a very wonderful invitation. Caribou soup will be ready. I'm waiting for it. Anyway, the Barrow is a special place. Late at night, as I am searching for a place to eat, I discover a very pleasant find. It's a Korean restaurant in this remote area far away from home. Korean people are amazing. I imagine he would have the blood of an adventurer flowing through him just like me. <laughs> On the way to our lodgings, Mr. Lee Dong Hwan offers to be my guide for the day and leads me to a cemetery in the Arctic village. <laughs> It's a bit scary to think there are frozen mummies under my feet. Fortunately, the sun is still up, and it's still bright outside even though it's 11 o'clock at night. All the houses in the Arctic are different from common houses in other regions of Alaska. The pipes that should be underground or against the walls are all in the ceiling. There is one more preparation required for the white knight. If you don't cover the windows, you can't sleep because it's bright throughout the day. Can you believe that it's one o'clock in the morning right now? Also, the houses are built about one meter above the permafrost so the coal doesn't come inside the house. Out of all the things about Baro, the thing Mr. Li Donghuan wants to show me the most is whale hunting. Whale hunting can be described as a test of patience for both the Inupiat and the whales. The International Whaling Commission prohibits whale hunting, but they make an exception for the Inupiat, who hunt them for survival. Each village has a quota. The city of Baro can hunt 12 whales per year. Even after 30 years, will the whales still be the fate of the Inupiat? It worries me to think if the Arctic Ocean will still provide for their lives until then. In the morning before leaving Baro, I come to Marvin's house, who promised to make caribou soup. It looks like the home of a whale hunter, an Inupiat. This is our hunting, our hunting stuff. You gotta look like this. For winter. For winter? On the ice and the snow. So they don't see you. Strap. Uh -huh. yeah. I use everything oh. for hunting like that. There is much wisdom about nature behind their hunting methods. 
Marvin begins to cook with the thigh, the tastiest part of the meat. From the looks of it, it's similar to beef. Actually, really good. What does caribou meat taste like? I grow impatient and have a taste. Marvin's hands move quickly as he works in the kitchen. We have to be out there maybe one month, ah. maybe, and then we, uh, maybe a couple weeks we stay out there, mm. away from our family, so we got to cook ourselves. Yeah. A lot of meat, gravy. This my first caribou soup made by the best chef in Baro. You enjoy hunting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very much. The meat is very tender, even though the caribous are wild. They say the way they're mm. caught determines the taste. From real far, the caribou, uh, and they want to run away if you go to them fast. I go to them very slow. Because uh, if they run, the, their meat, uh, the, the meat starts to taste different. You know, they start uh, sweating. Yeah. And then the meat get very hard and tough uh, when you try to eat it, get mm, very chewy. Mm. This is the best. Wow. He is definitely a veteran hunter. Hunting is a skill of life he learned from his father when he was 10 years old. I got older. I got my, my father shoot long way. Someday he will probably give this to his son. If you be, if you're not brave, you won't go to the animal. Mm. You stay away from it, and then you go hungry, and then you're gonna, mm. yeah, you're probably gonna die. And... Mm. <laughs> then, then you'll see how we go. Marvin back. tells me to visit again during whaling season. We say goodbye, and I'm on my way. It's impossible for us to understand how harsh it is to live in the bitter cold of minus 40 degrees while relying on nature. But I can see clearly they are a strong and tough people who have survived in such circumstances. Someday, I will return to borrow the end of the world to realize that dream.